why there seems to be an epidemic of overweight kids especially in the united states where we're eating all kinds of different food than we did as children so today we're going to be talking about some of the solutions to that and some of the things that you might be able to be active in if you live in the right place so first of all i'm going to introduce you to our guests and then we're going to talk about what exists so first of all we have nikki clink camera thank you for joining us She's Thank you for having me. Executive Director of Proactive Kids. Am I pronouncing it right? Yep. Proactive Kids can help. Then we have Mary Janetta McFall, who's a registered nurse, and she is actually a school nurse right now. And then we have Dr. Tony Kufus, who is a naturopathic doctor, a reflexologist, and an iridologist. So let's get right to the core of this. You know, I was a very thin kid. And I enjoyed being thin. <laughs> and I had a girlfriend who was kind of heavy, not obese, but heavy. And she hated the fact that I could eat anything and, and stay thin. And you know, I never realized really what she was going through until later when I ate a lot of food and gained weight. But it really is uncomfortable to exercise. It's not something that you can easily wear all kinds of clothes. It is a depressing thing to be overweight. Mm -hmm. And there are so many kids that are overweight now because of fast foods and things that we didn't even have available to us. Mm -hmm. So how did this program get started? Sure, it actually started um, through a health department coalition out in DuPage County. So there were a lot of groups involved um, in, in getting the program off the ground, um, a lot of volunteers, namely. Mm -hmm. So the program was started uh, by volunteers that came together and said, we do need to do something about this. What needs to be done about this? Um, about this crisis that we're seeing in our country with almost one in three children being overweight and obese. Um, and so they came together and they developed a program and they executed it at the Wheaton Park District for a few years as volunteers, which is a very cool thing. You have all these different professionals contributing time, talent, um, and, and energy into helping children um, and their families learn how to adopt a healthier lifestyle. Um, and then it just started growing from there. It turns out hospitals need to offer these programs in their communities. Um, it's really easy for us to help them do that because it's what we do every day. And so, um, so we just grew from there. We've been in over eight or nine different locations in the Chicago area. Um, we are still growing. We're actually starting our first location in downtown in the city of Chicago um, this coming Monday that we're really excited about. Um, that location is funded by WellCare, um, Harmony Health Plan. And um, we look forward to serving the city and hopefully being able to grow into more locations throughout the downtown area as well as in addition to the suburbs and outside of Chicago. And so where are the current locations? Uh, we are currently at Advocate Children's in Park Ridge, Advocate Children's in Oaklawn, which is hosted at Dawes Elementary School. Uh, and we are in Addison, or so, I'm sorry, Lombard. We just moved our Addison location to Lombard. That is funded by Advocate Good Samaritan Hospital and um, Edward Elmhurst Health. Um, we are at um, Edward Health and Fitness Center in Woodridge, um, which is funded by the Edward Elmhurst location there. Um, and that's where we are right now. We're uh, hoping to start one in Rogers Park soon, hopefully by fall. And then, of course, I have a ton of other hot leads that I can't talk about yet. <laughs> so tell us a little bit about what they do, and then I'm going to ask Mary and Tony to ask you questions about. Sure. Uh, the program is eight weeks. Um, our criteria is children 8 to 14 who are in the 85th percentile and above in weight in their BMI. So, you know, parents, they go to the doctor, they say their BMI is this, and then the BMI percentile chart. That's their chart, body metabolism. Yeah, right? their yeah. body mass okay. index. So it's, it's a calculation of height and weight. It's not the perfect um, formula for calculating a child's weight, but it is a universal formula that gives you an indicator of, you know, as your child's BMI is increasing and they're not, you know, lifting heavy weights, chances are it's fat mass increasing. Um, so 85th percentile and above in weight, ages 8 to 14, boys and girls. Um, no insurance is required. All of our, our partners offer this program 100% for free. It's very important to them that anybody who is struggling with this um, illness of obesity is able to participate in the program. No, f uh, no fee. You know, no insurance required. Is there any psychologists like involved? Yeah, okay. there are. So, um, so that's who comes. Um, children can see this flyer sitting in their doctor's office. They can see it sitting in their school nurse's office. Um, it can be, you know, maybe posted on the board at Mariano's. Anybody who sees the flyer, learns about the program, visits our website, is able to enroll. So, um, very much open to the public at large. Um, the program is eight weeks long, um, so the kids come for eight weeks, which can be a big time commitment, but, you know, it's going to take what some time, time is to... It? Is it right after school? It's right after school, so it takes some time to, uh, you know, reverse some of those bad habits. So, uh, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, we start at 4 p.m. 
So from 4 to 4.45, we do our fitness, and we have a, a trainer, um, a group trainer who does fitness with the children. Um, standard kind of circuit workouts. We use hurdles. We use body weight. We use medicine balls, agility ladders, you know, just a lot of movement. We want to get the kids moving, um, rosy cheeks, you know, some sweat, um, just enough for them to have a good workout for about. Because I said a lot of schools, I don't think have gym anymore. I don't know, does your school have gym classes? Our, gym, our school has gym classes yeah. once a week. Yeah. Once a wow. week, them every day. Right. Yeah. Seems mm -hmm. to be very different from right. school yeah. to school as to who Is has it? gym, yeah. and I'm not sure how all that's decided within each individual district. So, so yeah, chances are these kids maybe show up and haven't run around all day. So that's why fitness is first, um, because the second two portions are more classroom style. So let's get them moving. They've been sitting at their desk all day. How many kids can be in each? Uh, we like to have around groups of 20, so um, anywhere between 20 and 30 kids. Just very, cla very much like a classroom. So they run, they do their fitness, and then they go into what we call lifestyle. So Proactive Kids Lifestyle is the mental health coaching component of the program. Um, it can be run by a psychologist, a, a social worker, a mental health coach. Um, really just depends on their background, and we hire them based on you know, who they've worked with, how they've, how they've helped kids in the past. Uh, but it can be any of those different titles. And they do 45 minutes of that on both Monday and Wednesday, and then we'll talk about Friday in a minute. And that is everything from goal setting to body image, self-esteem. We talk about communication styles. You know, maybe maybe a child is not able to communicate what they're feeling or communicate what's happening at school. So we're kind of teach them about how to communicate, how to tell your mom that something happened to you at school so you're not holding it in and then you're going and eating more because you're trying to compensate for a feeling that you can't quite describe. Um, Feelings towards fitness we cover in there, stress, bullying, you know, all these different things that not only overweight children, but any child can, you know, experience during a school day um, or, or any day at home with their family. So that's Monday and Wednesday, 45 minutes of fitness, 45 minutes of lifestyle, an hour and a half, two different coaches in each of those respective areas. Friday is different. Friday is what we call our family day. Um, mom, dad, brother, sisters, we require one parent. We never kick anybody out if a parent doesn't come, but we do want one parent to be there. Guardian, grandma, whomever. Somebody to support the child. Um, and everybody does everything together. So they do 40 minutes of fitness together. Parents do too? Yep, which is really cool because the kids have probably never seen their parents um, Exercise, work out. You yeah. know, who really sees their parents mm -hmm. work out? So it's a really cool thing. And the kids, they get very involved. They do relay races and all sorts of fun things. And um, then we do 45 minutes of our lifestyle coaching. That's also really cool because if a kid was working on a skill that week, say body image or self-esteem, the lesson that day is designed to pull the family into it and to practice you know, a certain skill um, as it relates to the lesson of the week and get the family involved. So the parents are able to understand that the child is working on this. You know, uh, let's say it's bullying. You know, um, a lot of parents will ask, how can I help them? What can I do? And it just gives them a really good conversation, um, not only in their family unit, you know, a lot of times we break out into groups for five minutes and talk about this amongst your family, but then to ask the coaches for help. You know, what do I do if I think my child's building? So it's a great resource for everybody. And then our dietitian comes in on Fridays. And so that's the big event. Um, she brings a snack, he or she brings a snack, and um, a lot of times we like to have the snacks are things that parents can make easily at home that are affordable, you know, can go in the lunches. Um, just Like some, carrots? Like carrots, you know? <laughs> yeah. Those are very easy to find. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, and, and the dietitian comes in and does a nutrition lesson. So our nutrition lessons, um, we have eight different Fridays in the program. We do Go Slow and Woe Foods, My Plate, Portion size. Our two biggest lessons are probably portion size and label reading in regards to what the family cite that their real struggles are. Portion size is a big one. We have a lot of parents stand up and say, Junior wants to eat as much as dad. Junior doesn't understand why he can't eat as much as dad. And you know, you have them stand up and look at the size difference here, guys. And um, that's a big one. A parents say that that's a real struggle in their house. Um, and then we do everything else, you know, sugar, breakfast, meal planning. Um, how, what's in the kitchen, you know, how to help parents come up with some uh, ideas for making food. You know, it can be hard to come home after a long day of work and just be like, what am I going to make for dinner? And you have three kids looking at you. It's just easier to get in the car and maybe go to McDonald's. So um, we try to help them with that, try to encourage mm -hmm. them, you know, sit down on Sunday or Saturday whenever you have that free hour. And, you know, what does your week look like? And yeah, maybe there's one day you have to go out because you just can't do it. But, you know, there's nothing wrong with some spaghetti and red sauce at the end of the day is, you know, mm -hmm. No, it doesn't about, seem healthy, but healthier than some other options out there. about bullying, and I never really got bullied, but I had much younger brothers, and mm -hmm. they did. And one time one of them said something about somebody bullying them, and so I was working 
midnights as a nurse and i got up and put on a robe and curlers in my hair and went to the school to tell the kid off that was bullying them nobody bullied them anymore i think they thought it was crazy <laughs> they were afraid if i was going to show up again who was that but <laughs> it was did you ever get bullied tony um actually i kind of took care of the bully <laughs> in, in grade school and because he uh, the bully was the bully of the class, you know, mm -hmm. and and you had to straighten them out early. Otherwise, that they they got away with a lot, you know. Yeah. But you had to straighten them. Well, out. I guess there's a lot more of it now. I mean, I don't know. Maybe I was just not seeing it. But in my own classes, I really never saw it happen we, we to anybody. Yeah. yeah. But you know, the heavy they did. You know, I'm sure they made fun of some of the heavier kids. And these kids usually do have a problem because the more junk you eat, the hungrier you get. And if you have psychological issues at home, like I remember two girls in particular, young girls, their father was apparently having an affair and the mother instead had no friends. And so she was telling them about this and they got huge, oh, right. you know, yep. because it was being put on kids that yep. should have never been put on. Just emotional. And comfort. you know, then there's, there's other kids. I mean, I even have relatives. One had a gluten intolerance and cheese and uh, all kind of casein intolerance. Mm -hmm. And his mother fed him nothing but pizzas all the time. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. in 20 minutes, you could see him have an outburst from the time he ate it to, you know, the mm -hmm. time. So, you know, some people don't know what's causing it in their kids, but other people do know and they just ignore it. Mm -hmm. And that's bad. Yeah. yeah. They let them eat what they want. How it's hard. It's a habit. You know, it's yes. a really hard thing to sure. turn around. When you're off course. Um, it's easy to give them what they. Yeah, it's just, it's, for. you know, and that's why we try to really strongly encourage Saturday or Sunday, whenever you have some free time, you need to really sit down and think about what the week look like, looks like. But, you know, it's not just related to the, to the, the dinner you're serving that night. You know, we've had parents who don't know what their child is having for school, for the school breakfast. They don't know what their child is having at the school lunch. So, you know, let's say you don't know what they had for breakfast, you don't know what they had for lunch, and then you have McDonald's for dinner, there's a chance they didn't eat one healthy thing that day, you know? So trying to make parents more aware, you well, know? What do the schools feed the kids now? Is it hot dogs and hamburgers and fries or? I if have heard have a lunch. variety of things. Yeah. You know, there's been a lot of um, school lunch program we didn't have a lunch reform program programs. So mm -hmm. I, I think it's it's probably very different from district to district. Mm -hmm. um, and I know it's something schools struggle with as well. They try to offer something healthier, but the kids are still taking you know the unhealthy thing, and mm -hmm. so they're getting rid of they're they're, they're throwing a lot of the, the health foods away. So I think the schools are really still trying to figure out the best approach to healthier there school There was a lunches. school up north several years ago, we did a show with this a lot of years ago, that actually took all the unhealthy stuff out and gave them only healthy stuff. And, and the bullying stopped, the fighting stopped, all kinds of mood changes stopped, mm -hmm. the kids got better grades. And all they really did was change the type of bread they were giving them. Right. I think it was a bread company that did it. And they were giving them, you know, really grainy whole wheats and mm -hmm. stuff like that instead of the kind that are just sugar, Refined. flour, flour, sugar. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. A lot of processed foods mm -hmm. and carbs. Mm -hmm. and How long has this program been in existence? Uh, we started in 2009, so really wow. our first full year was 2010. So wow. we've had 859 graduates of the program. Oh, amazing. So oh, okay. we've had, you know, so when... Long overdue. Yeah. My goodness. Yeah, so um, I think we've hosted 73 sessions. Um, so some were small, some were large, it just depended. Uh, but we have at 859 graduates, which is probably, you know, so we offer this program for free. So unfortunately, sometimes we do have attrition and folks don't drop off. So we like to think we've probably educated over 1,300 um, with about 860. Can they completed. come back? They can. They can do they two can sessions. Do two. So, um, you know, we want to make sure that we are educating everybody who needs education. So this can't be your final after school fitness program. You know, we invite you to come for two sessions. Um, you know, sometimes it's better to do a session, skip a few months, and then try again um, if you need a little bit of, you know, reminding. Um, but two sessions just because we need to make room for other kids. And um, we just, we don't want it to become a free fitness program. So you program. don't have any problem with the being empty? No. Okay. No. That's no, if, if we have a loan enrollment, we'll just postpone. You know, we work with mm -hmm. our hospital partner and, you know, do some more um, posts and stuff because we really do need the doctors to do the majority of the referrals. Um, like I said, you can hear about it from anywhere, but the majority of our referrals do come from doctors, whether somebody's doctor told them about the program or they saw um, the flyer in the exam room or posted to the posted to the door somewhere within the within the physician office. And how is this financed? 
um, by each of our hospital partners. So oh, they see. directly fund the program at their location. So we're here in Elmhurst today. Um, we have a you know a program funded by El Elmhurst Memorial Hospital oh, um, right over here in Lombard. Very good. Do you have any schools involved in the program? Um, we are hosting the program at a few schools. Um, so up at Advocate Children's in Park Ridge, we've always hosted it at Gemini Junior High School. Um, it was a, a great facility. You know, really, we just look for a place where kids can run around. Mm -hmm. um, and our time of day makes it sometimes hard to find the perfect sure. facility. You know, the perfect gym. And um, so we've been, at, which is a great place for them to be. And then we are actually moving to uh, Ju uh, elementary school this coming. January in a few days um, where we're working really closely with the school nurse so um, we've been working with advocates to uh, try a different initiative instead of opening up to the entire public um, we're working with the school nurse who has identified and enrolled all mm -hmm. of the kids so she's talked to the parents about the program um, she's gotten them all registered through us and so they're still receiving all of our emails and everything but they really came to the program knowing exactly what they were getting into so we'll see how it works we're really excited about it so um, we're going to start there on Monday and then the additional uh, benefit of that is that the school nurse will know the program very, very well. She will be there. Um, I don't mm -hmm. think she plans to attend every session, but we will work closely to make sure she knows everything they learn throughout the course of the program. So she'll be able to bring the kids in who completed it on a regular basis to help keep the conversations going, keep the lessons going, stay top of mind, how are, you know, she'll know what their biggest struggle was. Was mm -hmm. your biggest struggle portion size? Yes. You know, so she can ask them the right questions. Do they weigh them every week? Or? We weigh in one, three, six, and eight. Mm. So we do. We take complete measurements in week one and eight. That's, um, you know, the BMI, body fat, fat mass, fat free mass, because it's not all about weight. So something we learned very early yes. on is it's not the weight in pounds. Um, when you engage in a program like this or any health program, um, if your body hasn't, you know, worked out, you're going to hopefully start to build some muscle, muscle which is heavier, you know, yeah. which is heavier than fat. So um, yeah. our average body fat percent decrease is about two and a half percent on average, great, and about yeah. seventy-two percent of our children who have graduated from the program, so seventy-two percent of eight hundred and fifty-nine, have decreased body fat in some way. So it's really not all about just that weight in pounds on the scale. We really need to be looking at the entire body composition. When I was of in nursing child. school, they used to weigh us every week, and one girl said that they, she came in a little heavy, and they weighed her every day. I mean, she was scared. <laughs> <laughs> I never had that problem there. Wow. So. Well, just the fact that the program is free mm -hmm. gives the parents an opportunity if they're having issues with mm -hmm. their children to get them into something that won't cost them and will start changing other personality aspects of yeah. the child also. Well, like That's I was saying perfect. to her when we were talking earlier, you know, they have these shows on about my 600 pound life and everything, and they're talking about how these people just keep eating, and I keep saying, who's giving them the food? Because they can't get through the door. They can't go to the grocery store or anything. And it's like, if your child is overweight, there's a good chance you're the problem. Sure. Because you're bringing in the wrong stuff. Sure, they can get things at other places. But like in our house, and I think you said in yours, we were never allowed to drink soda except on Sunday. That was at one meal on Sunday. And now these kids are drinking three oh, or four cans several a day. Oh, sodas, terrible. You know, which has like 10 teaspoons of sugar in every one. Yes. Yeah, it's like crazy. And if you drink the diet stuff, that's a chemical that's worse for you. Yes. And it, and it doesn't help the kids with attention deficit disorder or all these, you know, kids with all these allergies. So can all uh, types of kids attend, even kids with special needs? Depending. Um, we kind of go by the rule if they have an aid at school, we don't have the ability to offer aids. So, okay. you know, we, if the aid comes with them, that is fine, but we can't provide their own aid. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How many kids would you think at your school might be overweight? I would probably say over a third. I was going to say, do the math. It's over a third. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. So. Well, yeah. So they, it's they really high. And they start changing clothes sizes where larges are different larges and yeah. mediums are different mediums they did. than they were a few years back. So it says a lot. Mm -hmm. Well, and I think there's a lot of buzz that childhood obesity is um, leveling off. Um, but I think they're forgetting the second part of that sentence where it's leveling off, but it's still at a very high rate. You know, we haven't. We haven't tackled this epidemic yet, and I think we're um, a long ways away. You know, with the amount of convenient food out there, with the Costco's and the Sam's Clubs, and you know, if you pull into any street corner on the way here, you know, you pass a wide variety of places that offer very unhealthy choices. And so, 
Um, you know, I think we're a long ways away from beating this Oh, and this they epidemic. say this will be the first group of kids that lives a shorter time than mm -hmm. their own parents. And yes. I'm sure their parents don't want to be burying their kids. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah so, that, so that's another reason that health care helps fund this program, because ultimately, um, you know, while the children may not be experiencing illness now as it's related to their obesity, they will at some point. You know, the longer, there was a recent study that came out that the longer the child spends in the obese state increases their risk for a variety. You know, so you're, let's just say you're obese for 10 years, you know, and then you do lose the weight, you know, your risk might be less than somebody who was obese for 20 years and then eventually lost the weight. So it's really about stopping it now. You know, so a lot of these doctors are seeing the kids, their BMI is on this incline. And so while all of our kids aren't massively overweight, you know, for some reason the indicators are showing that they're headed there. And so it's time mm -hmm. to kind of stop now now because if we can stop it now um, you know that child has uh, it'll be a lot easier in their future than to lose the weight later you know and then don't even start with the social stigmas of being overweight in high school you know and all those things and so um, well just the general feeling I mean I've been thin and I've been heavy yeah <laughs> the general feeling is much better yeah what you can wear what you can do how you can move around how yeah. fast you can move around whether you're tired all day or right. not well, and we get great compliments like that throughout the course of the program. You know, you have the parents telling us the teacher asked what he had been up to or, you know, his coat mm -hmm. was too big and he was really excited. You know, just little things because I believe that kids, they don't want to be overweight, but they're not necessarily associating that piece of cake or that bad breakfast or, you know, they're not associating every food decision with how much they weigh. And, you know, that's really where we need parents' help in this. And so at our program, we really ask the parent to be that health coach at home because mm -hmm. we have to partner with the parent to accomplish some of these things. To well, there was something on the internet the, the other day and they said, would you feed your kid this for breakfast? It was a hot fudge sundae and you wouldn't. And then they showed how the, the ice cream and the fudge was the same as the cereal, right. the sugar and sugar. the cereal. It was the same amount of carbohydrates. Yes. And stuff. Probably the ice cream was better because it had some fat in it. Yes. Well, and that's where it's hard because there are like blatant <laughs> bad decisions yeah. and then just like other bad decisions. And that's yes. why you know, it's so important to educate the family mm -hmm. as well as a child because like you had mentioned before, the family right. is the one who's initiating those choices. So and, and, it's and great that you're doing that. All cereal's not bad, you know, mm -hmm. but the issue too is bowl size. You know, mm -hmm. okay, cereal is a fairly common breakfast food. You know, having a little bowl of cereal each it morning be, isn't going to cause you. because it would make you, you hungrier. True. But the issue is just nobody eats just this much. You know, they eat this much or they eat the, that's part of the issue. Or well, you have two bowls or whatever you do because you don't feel full. You know, so we do talk a lot about and fiber. And it stimulates your insulin. And then mm -hmm. you're hungry before mm -hmm. lunch, and then they're eating stuff at lunch that they shouldn't be eating, and then they're hungrier for dinner. It's a bit well. There's also another issue circle. that a lot of schools provide a mid-morning snack. We didn't have a snack mid-morning. No, my husband but. said that he had that they brought milk to them every day, and because of that, he loves milk. I, I really don't like milk, but um, we never had them bring anything to us. Yeah. I don't know. Did you yeah, have they anything? They give a little carton of milk. We had you a carton. We and did it lunch. Maybe some mm -hmm. yeah. crackers. Yeah. yeah. You did too. <laughs> Yeah, but the I'm glad they didn't bring it to me because I didn't want it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> but I, we never had that. The school I'm at actually uh, serves breakfast too. Is it breakfast. a healthy breakfast? Um, Semi-healthy. <laughs> no, the, the definition optimal, of healthy yeah. because when you present truth to people about f should be fresh and raw, mm -hmm. and they're wondering what is what are they talking about raw? Yeah. Well, that's what food is. Right. Be fresh raw and alive. So you'd be better off with a celery stick and a carrot stick. Absolutely. But it, it, the sad part is it isn't as easy as it seems, right? Because then it goes into cost and it goes into freshness and it, you know, and it's cheaper for the school to offer, you know, maybe. And cost so it goes back into school budgets and it's yeah, just but, a I mean, bigger, at, bad web. At home web. you could have celery and peanut butter or almond butter, which would have less allergic problems. But you could have those kinds of things that would be more filling. Oh, sure. Yes. And it would be easy. I mean, but we've had parents it. who are feeding their children breakfast at home, and then once we keep talking and talking, they don't know if they're eating breakfast at school. Mm -hmm. So there's there's a problem. Well, so you just served them a breakfast, mm -hmm. and now they they could so they they're having two breakfasts and then potentially a snack. You know, so that's where we're really just in, you know, as a parent, you you're into their school, you're into their grades, you want to know who their friends are. You know, and so for our parents whose children are struggling with weight we're encouraging them to be as involved in what they're eating each day. You know, we don't want them to be helicopter parents, but we, 
you know, we do need them to know, especially if they are eating meals at school, what is your child eating? Because obviously that's a huge part of the problem and the, the bigger calorie intake at the end of the day that really does need to be identified. You know, mm -hmm. and that, it, that also relates to, you know, hoarding or, you know, for parents who aren't home after school. Have you just been to Costco, you're not home after school, and there's just all sorts of food for the children yeah, to eat without parents cookies. around. You know, every family is so I never different. got cookies as a snack when I came home either. I had dinner mm -hmm. later, you know. Yeah. Is there a way for the kids to keep track of what they're eating? Do you teach that how to keep track of the portions and the calories? Yes, we, we do do portion size. Um, you know, as you can imagine in child health, um, there's certain stigmas attached to calorie counting. So while we don't do calorie counting, um, we do a lesson that shows a child's age, a child's activity level, and approximately how many calories they should be taking in mm -hmm. each day, which for most kids it's around 2,000, 2,500, just depending boy, girl, fitness level. Um, you know, and then, then it's not, it's all relative at that point. So when you walk into McDonald's and see the calorie count up there on the menu, which is awesome that they have it up there, and you see, you know, 800 to 1,000, then you start to have an idea, okay, that's half of my daily intake. But without knowing how many calories you're supposed to have in a day, you how can know. you even begin to know what you should or shouldn't sure. be eating? You know, and the, cal the, the calorie counting, you know, with the, our kids are 8 to 14. So the 14-year-olds, they might get that. The 13-year-olds, they might get that. The younger kids really need to rely on our mm -hmm. parents. So that label reading lesson is almost a little more important for sure, the parents. Absolutely. But well, the yes. shopping, you know, I see those little carts that they have at Trader Joe's mm -hmm. and Whole Foods and everything oh, where yeah. the kids are going around with it too and it's it's nice to see them. I always tell them, you're such a lucky kid that your mother shops at this kind of a store yeah. because, you know, well we never went shopping with my mother, but you know, it's a nice thing for them to learn how to do the right things too. It Absolutely. is. Um, and I actually go back and forth because I have a little one myself. Yeah. And I hear a lot of our dietitians, some who don't have kids, mm -hmm. telling the parents to take the kids shopping with them. And I'm like, eh. Like, yeah. maybe it's a time for the parent to go learn well, and maybe, have time reading yeah. the labels without the maybe kids and then tool, bring the kids back. when they back. get a little older. Um, but we do hear okay. countless stories of our parents saying um, they catch their kids in the grocery aisle, picking up something, looking it down, looking at it, and then kind of putting it back on the shelf you know no. so they are learning they are okay. picking up so if your child is struggling with unhealthy weight proactive kids can help now there are a lot of upcoming sessions so depending on when you see this show there's one January 23rd to March 17th there's a spring April 10th to June 2nd and fall September 18th to November 10th on Monday Wednesdays and Fridays so you can't miss having a nice free thing like this because it's unbelievable that you can have your kid go to something free. And you can check out all of the information at proactivekids.org, mm -hmm. right? Yep, and enroll right there as okay. well. Okay, and can you give a phone number too? Because we're running out of time. Um, the phone number is 630-681-1558, but that is on the website. You can read frequently asked questions, you can send okay. emails, um, and you can also just enroll your child right there. Okay, if you forget any of that information, you can email me at asktvnurse at yahoo.com. That's asktvnurse at yahoo.com, and I will send the information to you. So I want to thank you for joining us, Nikki, thank you. Mary, and Dr. Tony. Thank you for joining us, and we'll see you next time. Keep your kids healthy. <laughs>